Settle in class, today we have a more traditional lesson on the basics of CR balancing. We'll go over the basic tools at our disposal, pick them apart to see what makes them tick, and learn how to use them to balance encounters for our parties. We've all heard experienced DMs say to completely ignore it, no system can meet your needs, and experience knows better. And I'm not denying it. This is a beginner's toolbox. If you put together your own, you don't need a new one. But to get the experience and tools to do that, you have to start and then fail, and then know how to learn from that failure. Diving in blind works great for some people, but not for everyone. People learn differently. Sometimes when you throw someone in a pool, they don't learn how to swim. They just sink and start to drown. Six times. And while that's a learning experience for some, others only learn to avoid the situation entirely. So let's learn how CR works, so when we use it and something breaks, we can fix it and grow. Without further ado, let's begin. The main tool we have is the CR system. This is a system made to balance encounters and might be the most misunderstood part of the entire book, right alongside the monster maker. You look at the chart, pick a difficulty, and add together an XP amount based on the number and level of the people in your party. Then you use that as a budget to throw together monsters for the encounter. The cost is listed next to the CR. Adjust that cost with this chart to account for multiple monsters getting more attacks, and you have your encounter. Is it perfect? Not at all, but it can be better than you think. The main issue is a blatant misunderstanding of how adventurers actually operate, but some of the foundational principles are still pretty solid. You see, the chart assumes that your average party will get in six to eight fights a day, primarily on medium or hard difficulty, with one to two short rests. It's been about a decade since I've seen that happen, though, unless violently forced on them. It also assumes you will never use a monster whose CR is higher than your player level. The CR is actually a this tall to ride sign. It wants you to use more creatures, not stronger ones, even if you're using deadly difficulty. You see, deadly difficulty doesn't actually mean what you think it does. Easy means you might not even lose HP. Medium encounters might drain some HP or a spell, hard means someone might get knocked out, and deadly, the last difficulty, is what most players would assume to be ultra hard. Well, that's wrong. It means it could be lethal for one or more people, and the party is at risk of defeat. Defeat does not mean death, it means your party realizes they're in danger and retreats. Deadly basically just means that death is an actual possibility. So the system is intended to slowly chip away at people over eight encounters, none of which are individually a threat. It assumes the adventurers will push their luck until they recognize they're about to go down and retreat or risk a person's death. In reality, the party expects around three to four encounters and are completely sporadic about pushing their luck or resting every fight. Some will run when people start dropping, and others will run forward screaming death or glory. The system is actually decent at what it wants to do, but that's not what most people actually need. So to make this better for us, we need to recognize where where we're struggling with the system, where it breaks. Let's start with the encounters per day. Why did they expect a whole eight combats? Well, because the players have a shallow pool of HP, and they're usually better at dealing damage than taking damage. With short rests and healing, that cleric might have access to 80 HP, but they'll never actually have more than 30 at a time, and only if they get some time to recover, which means that what matters most is the speed at which HP drains and the time between each fight to recover. So if our difficulty seems off, we need to look at how much time they have between fights. Too easy? Well, did they have time to short rest? If you didn't plan for that, there's your reason. We often control the time they have, so keep that in mind. If this is a group you meet with regularly, keep track of how they usually operate and plan accordingly. Of course, the amount of encounters is usually only half the equation. The other half is what's in those encounters. Why is the difficulty set up like this, and why do they want you to never use creatures above their level in CR? Well, first let's look at monster abilities. Their example is the Rock Sasha, which is immune to spells below 7th level. Casters get level 7 spells at level 13, so they're CR 13. Even if you go to less extreme examples, the DCs of abilities are keyed around proficiency bonuses, and some of those effects can be nasty. Linking into that is the average damage per round. CR 7 creatures, for example, range from 22 to 96 damage per round, 42 on average. Monsters which go above that average almost invariably cannot do that damage every round or have their damage spread out through an area or multiple attacks. They'll also have weaknesses or low health factored in to counter it. Having a monster take out the fighter in one hit doesn't just take them out of the fight. It reduces the damage the party can deal while the enemy often hits just as hard. We don't just have to factor in how much damage a monster can do, but how they're doing that damage. The amount of rounds they can last against the party matters and is something that we can change to strengthen or weaken an encounter. We should avoid creatures with a single attack that can drop a melee fighter or have an area of effect that can drop our casters unless we've compensated for that. The whole point of having 18 rounds of daily combat split into tons of weak encounters was to keep the drain of resources in control. We can take manual control just fine and reduce those daily encounters as long as we're mindful of what the enemy can do to the party in those rounds, and what the party can do in return. And I don't just mean what they can do by sprinting up and bonking them. 
An encounter is more than just a monster. If they have a trap they can spring, or a magic item that's used, we need to count on that. You want to use a monster but it's too strong? Make sure the party gets the drop on it. Or if it's melee, just put it far enough back that your casters get an extra round or two to soften it up. Don't forget the players either. Is your creature immune or vulnerable to fire and you know the party's prepared snots are just fireball? Then you'll want to consider how much longer or shorter it'll stick around to deal that damage. So to use CR better, you start with your budget but pay attention to what the monsters you're using can actually do. You can squeeze encounters down to less than 6 as long as we pay attention to the damage outflow of our monsters and how long they might last. You can still use monsters above the CR as long as you're careful with what monsters you're using. Normally this is the part of the episode where the music changes and I come up with a homebrew solution to all your problems. Or at the very least, an interesting new problem. But honestly, this time I didn't. I mean, I did, but I chucked it out. You don't need it. A lot of these alternate systems work great, but in practice they're just good enough to keep you relying on it instead of growing. And you do need to grow. There's too much to account for in your own tactics and the players and your environment. You can't make a perfect self-serving system. Now in that case, I could explain how to plan an encounter. And I will. But I realize doing it now will just hurt the lesson, which is critical thinking. If you pay attention when things go wrong, there's usually something to look at. Sometimes it is just down to dice rolls, but those can often be compensated for as well. And once you start doing this before and after sessions, when it's internalized, you can start doing it mid-session. You saw the bugbear crit, or the bard repeatedly miss, and now you know your flow is off. The eight goblins in the next room will be way too much damage for what health they have left. And instead of panicking or doing it the same and wondering what went wrong, you remember resource drain and you know how much those goblins do. So you know you can fix this by just pushing half of them to the far side of the room or have them be napping and take a round to wake up. Now instead of getting stabbed seven times in the first round and five times in the next and then whoops they're all dead, they get stabbed three times this round and four times the next and that makes so much difference. Or if the party recognizes that they're beat and rest up when you're expecting them to advance, you can change things while they're rolling to heal. Have those same eight goblins set up an ambush to get in a few more stabs. Or just get some reinforcements from the next encounter and you know how many reinforcements they can add and the party will feel clever for having thought to rest. And then you learn and you grow and the next time you're a little bit better. And then, well, you join the ranks telling people how you don't use CR anymore. Well, you kinda do. You use it to get a ballpark of strength when planning, but then you start learning how to think critically, and now, well, you get the picture. Maybe I didn't say much you didn't know, but I hope I explained it thoroughly enough and differently enough that I helped out at least a few people. Experience really is the way to elevate your games, but I figured anyone who hasn't dived in by now is probably the type who wants to know what to do or what to watch out for first. But people kept saying that the system is too broken to use, or you should just throw things out at your party and if they die, they die, and you got stuck. I'm not trying to call anyone out here, I'm just saying that people who give advice to massive audiences are the type of go-getters who like to speak to massive audiences, and their advice worked great for them and works great for other people like them, but maybe not for others. And the more types of DM we have, the better. Just like the more of you who follow the instructions on the board, the better. Help me catch up to those other YouTubers. My tiny goblin legs can only move so fast. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Class dismissed.